may be seated if you would open your Bibles to the book of Daniel chapter 11. This morning I'm going to be talking about knowing God, but I'm going to talk specifically about knowing who God is. You got to know who God is. I preached several messages recently on the people who do know their God and too many pe people, they think that God is a God who punishes and a God who makes them sick and, in order to teach them a lesson. But God is not like that at all. We have a good God, a God who heals, a God who saves, a God who delivers. And today I'm going to talk about knowing God, knowing who God is. Let us pray. Father, we just praise you and love you and thank you for the word of God. And Lord, I thank you for showing up and giving people revelation, Holy Ghost. Open hearts, open minds. Those watching by live stream and Facebook live, God, open them up to the gospel. We praise you and thank you for all you do that we're ever learning, ever growing in grace and knowledge. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Daniel eleven thirty two. 32. I'm going to quote the last part of that verse because this is where God has been speaking to my heart. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Say that with me. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do export. I, that's powerful. God said, if you know me, then you're going to do some mighty works. And that verse means that you and I, who've been filled with God's Holy Ghost power, who've been called out of darkness, who've been anointed and sent forth to carry this glorious gospel to others that we, if we know our God, we can do mighty works. We know our God here at Westmoreland, and our God is a good God. And, and Daniel, he's talking about the last days when darkness will be upon the face of the earth. If there has ever been a time that there was darkness, it's the day and age that we live in. Never would we have believed when we were small that we would see the looseness in morals that we see today. Never would we have believed that we would see the Antichrist spirit turned out and people turning away from God on, on TV. And uh, I, I saw uh, uh, something on my, my phone that one of the shows, and I won't even call its name, is not even worth mentioning, that it ought to be taken off of the air. But they stand up there and they blaspheme the name of God. They make fun of God, but I promise you there'll come a day when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. And this church is on a mission, and our mission is to reach out and touch people like that with the power of God and to show them through signs and wonders and mighty works, there's a God in heaven. Thank God for the testimonies and for the things that we're seeing God do. I thank God for Brother Lazaro and his family sitting there on the front row. He wants to get close to the fire. And he sent us a prayer request. And I read his prayer request. He said, I want to know more about God. And I'm preaching about knowing God. Amen. Then, then I'm in a meeting and the, the bishop, my bishop says, I'm going to be preaching Sunday. I'm going to be preaching about knowing God. I said, Holy Ghost, what are you saying to me? So I took Brother Lazaro and I took him and I gave him three points. I said, if you'll follow these, see... You know God by studying. You know God by prayer. You know God by coming to the house of God. And I gave him a little outline, and then I gave him a sermon that I'm going to preach. Not knowing God. It's going to be knowing God, but knowing who you are in God. And I gave him that, and I said, I'm going to preach that later. I said, but I'm just giving you that. I want you to start your study. Now, anybody that's hung, I wrote a little note. I said, Jesus said, they that hung in thirst after righteousness shall be filled. But thank God, Daniel said, in the day that darkness comes, the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. And that's what we're talking about in this message today, knowing God. The people who know their God, and that's us, amen? amen. We know our God, and our God is a good God. And if you're going to know who God is, then you've got to know who God is not, amen? God is not the author of your troubles. God is not the one who brings sickness and disease. God is not the one who sends the storms of life your way. No, it's the devil who comes to steal, kill, 
and destroy. And Jesus said, don't get me mixed up with him. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. If you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, go on and praise him. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We love you, Jesus, and we praise you. Glory to God. See, it's the people who do not know their God who are weak, and they don't ever do anything. Because when you know God, you know that with God, all things are possible. You know that your God can do anything that your faith requires him to do. Hallelujah. And the people who do not know their God, they will be weak and they will do very little for God. But the people who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. People that know their God, they know he's the El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. They know that he's Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. They know that he's the Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. They know he's Jehovah Shalom, the God of peace. And when you know God, you can be strong and you can do exploits. And that's what this church is all about right here. Getting people equipped for the end time harvest. Getting people ready to go out and do mighty exploits in Jesus' name. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Are you a believer? Then go on and praise God that you know God and you can do mighty exploits. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And in this church, we're not only teaching our people about God, but we are reaching out to evangelize. We're reaching out by live stream. We're reaching out by Facebook Live. And we believe that everybody has a right to hear about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we support missions. That's why we had that celebration today of global outreach. Uh, that's why I travel to other parts of the world when I can. That's why I invite uh, friends and ministers from other countries. We, we are reaching out to touch nations from this place. We believe that every person has a right to know that Jesus came the first time, that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. That he is seated at the right hand of God the Father with all power in heaven and earth in his name. That he's a good God. He's, we have a great high priest. He passed into the heavens. He's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And we know that God is a good God. And we want people to, to know God. We want them to be born again. And then we want to disciple them. And then we want to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. So that they can know God and do mighty exploits. We were singing that song today. There's a new name written down in glory. And we want people to know that their name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Some of the people that were singing that, you know, uh, they're getting closer to their journey than some of the end of their journey than some others. And, and I tell you, the closer you get home, the more you get excited about seeing, the, seeing what's waiting on the other side. Go on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> we're about the gospel. And what God says. Now, everyone who is saved, they have the Holy Ghost. But everyone who is saved, they do not have the baptism in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the Spirit bears witness with our spirit with the children of God. So when you got saved, you had a little inward voice that said, you're saved, you belong to God. The Bible says by one spirit are we all baptized into Christ. The Holy Ghost takes the blood of Jesus Christ. He applies it to your heart, and you are born again because you've been washed and cleansed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Old things are passed away. All the chains are broken. Praise God. Jesus is a chain breaker. And after you are baptized into Christ, you to, to live a holy life, get consecrated unto the Lord and seek God, then God, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, from his high priestly ministry in heaven, he baptizes his followers in the Holy Ghost. He's the one that did it. Some people say, wow, all that tongue talking going on in your church. Jesus did it. Jesus is the one that sent the Holy Ghost to the church. Jesus is the one that, that, that sent him so the church would be endued with power from on high. Praise God for the gift and go on and thank him. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. But I can promise you this, anyone who begins to seek the Lord with all their heart, when they read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they will have a greater hunger to know God. They want to know the God of the Bible. Look at John 1.18. Jesus said, no man has seen God at any time. 
The only begotten son which is in the bosom or which came out of the heart of God, he hath declared him. Jesus came to this earth to reveal the Father. He came to declare him. He has brought him out where he can be seen. And Jesus has made the Father known. Jesus said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And when he came and walked on planet earth in the flesh, it was God in a human body. Hallelujah. John said, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. Hallelujah. It takes truth to make you free. Amen. So I want you to know who God is. And if you really want to know who God is, then look at Jesus. Look at what he did. He is the visible representation of the invisible God. And if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and take off your denominational glasses, you will discover the Jesus of the Bible. I, I was talking to a man last night. My wife said, you talked to him. I said, I'm so far behind. She said, you talked to him about an hour and a half. I said, no, I didn't. But I looked on my phone. I talked to him for one hour and 18 minutes. <laughs> Pretty close. But I tell you what, he was inquisitive. He was desiring to know. And, and he said, I've never believed everything my denomination taught me because when I read this Bible, there's some things that don't line up. And I have so many preachers that come to me and they say, I, I read the Bible and I wonder why I cannot do what they did in the Bible. And these are good men. These are men that love God and, and, and they wonder why they've never cast the devil out. They wonder why they've never seen the he sick healed. And they see Jesus doing it, and they read about the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and they tell me, said, I haven't been taught that, but I know I, as a power that I need, hallelujah. See, the Holy Ghost is not just tongues. I tell you, I could preach on that a long time, but tongues is wonderful. Somebody said there are the lesser gifts. No, there are no lesser gifts. Every gift from God is wonderful. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Howbeit in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. When we don't know how to pray, the Holy Ghost prays through us with groanings and inarticulate expressions, and he prays the perfect will of the God. He is a gift sent from God, and Jesus sent him to the church to empower the church. Glory to God. Go on and praise him for the fullness of the Spirit. And many of these men, they're beginning to realize that when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, then the compassionate, healing Jesus, that he can manifest his works and his power through that individual. See, Jesus is full of compassion. And he cares he cares about suffering, sighing, dying, crying humanity. He is not a God that used to be. He is not a God that's going to be. He is the God who is right now. And he is the one who right now is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ever ask according to the power that works in you. And we need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. We need to take off our blindness and say, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Brother Lazarus, you want to know God more? Start seeking the baptism. Say, God, I want to know you. And, and when you start asking him, he will not withhold any good gift from you. The Bible says if you watch God, how he works in the natural and the spirit. If you then being evil, just ordinary people, know how to give good gifts to your children. Good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give good things to them that ask him? And then in Matthew's gospel, he said, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Woo! The Holy Ghost to them that ask him. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. What I'm saying is the people who do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. Amen. And I want to give you some points this morning. God's perfect number, seven points about knowing God. Number one, you need to know that God is a rewarder. He's a rewarding God. He's not the one who punishes you. God is the one who rewards you. 
Look at Hebrews 11:6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. You must believe in an invisible God that you cannot see. You must believe that he is, and you must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So get diligent about seeking God. Covet earnestly the best gifts. Amen. Desire spiritual gifts. Amen. And be zealous for them. And God will fill you and fill your heart because he puts the desires of your heart in your heart. Amen. People say, are you one of those faith preachers? Is that what your church is? Well, what kind of church do you want? A church that preaches unbelief? I don't want that kind of church. I want to be in a church filled with faith. People of like precious faith. It takes faith to please God. It takes faith to get things from God. You can't get saved without faith. You can't get healed without faith. You can't get victory without faith. You can't get anything without faith. Hallelujah. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. You must believe he is. You must believe that he will reward you, that he's a good God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some people say, well, I don't believe anything I can't see. Well, this is the first law of faith. You must believe in a God that you cannot see. No man has seen him at any time. Jesus came to declare him. Jesus said, I've come to reveal him. And as he walks through the pages of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he shows the compassion of God, the love of God, and he reveals to us just how good our God is. We have a great heavenly father. Amen. So you must believe that he is. But not only have you got to believe that, but you've got to believe that he's a rewarder. See, it's good to know that God has rewarded those who diligently seek him. Thank God, God is not the one who punishes us. He is the one who rewards us. He gives us the very desires of our heart. He said, delight yourself in God. Get delighted in him. Seek him first. He said, I'll add everything you need. He said, delight yourself in God. He shall give you the desires of your heart. So he's a God that rewards. Secondly, he's a blessing God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of light, in whom there is no shadow, no verbalness of turning. He is a blessing God. Look at Ephesians 1 and 3. This excited me. My wife had to listen to it as I got excited and praise God riding down the highway. Brother Philip told me the other day, he said, I've never done it yet, but I sure have felt like it. I've done it on at least two occasions. I get so excited riding down the road, I stop my car and get out and dance all around the car. One day I was going up to Henderson. I said, God, I, this thing is about to explode in me. So I stopped my car and I got out and danced all the way, pulled on the side road so nobody would see me. And danced all over the place, got back in my car and I looked over under the barn there. And there were two old farmers sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> they saw it all. They say, where did that nut get turned loose from? But I'm praising God. I'm just having a good time with Jesus. Amen. It doesn't matter what the world says. It matters what God says. God said, praise him in the dance. He says, shout aloud. Glory to God. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 and 3. I love this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that word, hath. Who hath. Past tense. Blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Are you in Christ Jesus? Then you are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Then you are blessed and highly favored of God. The Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That the blessings of Abraham might come on through us through faith. And Abraham was a great man of God. God is not out to curse anyone. God is not out to put a hex on them. But God is out to bless you. Our God is a blessing God. Hallelujah. It's wonderful to know that Jesus did not come to condemn that which was lost. He came to seek and save them. Hallelujah. Thank God he came to bless us. He came to heal us. He came to save us. He came to love us. He came to show compassion to all of those who are oppressed of the devil. God wants to bless his children. And God 
wants to bless you. So many people are blaming God for all their troubles that they're in. But God is not the one who brings the troubles. God is not the one who brings sickness and disease. God is the one who brings the blessing. God is the one who delivers us out of all our troubles. Psalms 91 verse 14, if you read that, it changes tenses there. And it talks about God begins to speak. It says, because he has set his affection on me, that I will deliver him. Because he has set his love upon me, I will deliver him. Because he has known my name. He said, he shall call upon me in trouble, and I will answer him. I will be with him. I will deliver him. Then with long life will I satisfy him and show him my glory. So God is a good God. And God is a blessing God. Thirdly, he's a delivering God. This one verse right here, the, the Christian world has, has taught it wrong for so long. Uh, I got saved. And I told my dad, I said, Daddy, why do people tell you that you're not worthy of anything, that God doesn't consider you worthy? Well, I said, I didn't feel like I was worth a whole lot when I come back from fighting a war and the things I'd been through. I said, but God felt like I was worth something. God sent his son to a cross. God let him bleed and die to save me. God thought I was worth something. I don't understand why they preach that you're not worthy. I said, God considered me worthy. I said, Daddy, why do they teach that? He said, son, I've always wondered myself. I don't know why. So I went on a quest, and I began to search the scriptures. It took me years to get it. We look at Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, or who has qualified us, Amen. or who has made us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Jesus said, watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. Paul preached to, in, in Acts chapter 13 to the Jews. He said, I had to preach it to you first because that's God's order. He said, but seeing that you have counted yourself unworthy of eternal life, put Acts uh, 13, 44 up there and, and keep looking till you, till you find that. Acts 13, 44, brother. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, go to the next verse. Might be first, verse 46. Look at verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas wax bold. I'm a bold preacher. I don't mind preaching stuff like this. It's the word of God. People need to know it. God counts you worthy because of the blood. Paul and Barnabas wax bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. But seeing that you put it from you and judge yourself unworthy of everlasting life, I'm turning to the Gentiles. How many of you heard that preached before? God put it in the book. God wants you to know he's a good God. He's a rewarding God. He's a blessing God. He's a delivering God. Look at Colossians 1 and 13. Who had delivered us? Hallelujah. Delivered us. You see that? From the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. He goes on to say, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. I like to tell the devil about the blood. I say, devil, you are a spirit. You don't have any blood. But God came to man, planted in human flesh. And Jesus was that man, the son of the living God. And he poured out his blood at Calvary. You don't have any blood, so you can't do a thing. I've got the blood of the lamb that declares my victory. Go on, praise him. We got some mighty weapons, church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God he delivered us from the power of darkness. We were lost, every one of us, in sin and transgressions. And the Lord came looking for us. And he began to call us out of darkness. He began to talk to us about the condition of our soul. He began to talk to us about eternity. What was that? It was God. Calling us out of darkness. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out of that darkness. Don't go to hell with the devil. Come out of that darkness. 
I'll never forget the day I got saved. I was a preacher's dream sitting in that church. Amen. I went there to get saved. And you know what? The only one that got saved that day was me. But I got saved. And I got saved real good. I got saved to the bone. All the way down to my core being. It didn't look like much happened in that service that day. Only one soul got saved. But when I confessed Jesus Christ as my Lord, I passed out of the devil's darkness. And I passed into the light of God's great kingdom. Hallelujah. Listen, Brother Baker, I want you to zoom in on me. I'm going to stand right here if I can. Hallelujah. Zoom on me, in on me with those cameras. Some of you people that are watching today, you're in darkness. You're in the darkness of drugs. You're in the darkness of alcoholism. You're in the darkness of pornography, adultery, all alternative lifestyles, all types of stuff like that. You're seeking after the things of the world, but the world can never satisfy. You're in darkness. If you're in the house today and you're not saved, you're in darkness. And you're on your way to hell. But listen, God is a delivering God. And God can deliver you out of the power of darkness. And he can put you into the light of his word. He's a delivering God. He's a good God. Hallelujah. He's a God that loves you. Cares about you. Thank God. That's what, what coming to church is all about. Getting people saved. So they can know God. He's a rewarder. He's a blessing God. He's a delivering God. Fourthly, he's a healing God. The word Jehovah means the God who reveals himself. And he revealed himself in the Old Testament, line upon line, precept upon precept, a little here and a little there. And he was letting his people know what type of God he was. Amen. And he unveiled himself and he revealed himself to his people by his Jehovah names. And the first name that he revealed himself by after they came out of Egyptian bondage, the first person he revealed himself to was Abraham. He said, I'm your Jehovah Jireh. But these people, Abraham's seed had been in slavery for 430 years. And he, they got to the waters of Myra, and the waters were bitter. And he said, I'm your Jehovah Jireh. Amen. And so the first name, your Jehovah Rapha. So the first name that he revealed himself by after they came out of bondage was that he was the healer. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for nurses and hospitals and medicine and anything that relieves human suffering. But every doctor knows he has limitations. Every doctor knows when his ability runs out. And every doctor, he has to look at cases and say, there's no hope. This is beyond my ability, and I cannot help you. But that's not true with God. He's a healer. He's Jehovah Rapha. He said, I am the Lord thy God that healeth thee. And the first thing that he healed, I, I preached it last week. He, he preached that uh, first thing he did, it, the waters were bitter. The first thing he healed that was the waters. How many of you that you, your life is bitter and you've tasted bitterness? Well, that, I'll tell you how to get rid of it. That tree, no insect could eat it. No one could cut it down and use it for for firewood. God planted that tree there. And God said there's going to come a day when my people are going to need healing. And they're going to need water. See, he takes care of physical need. Takes care of spiritual need. And he told Moses, he said, I want you to cut that tree down, throw it into those bitter waters, and they'll be sweet. Well, that tree is a picture of the cross. So if, if, if life has dealt you bitterness, come to Jesus. Come to him. He's a healing Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at 1 Peter 2, 24. Talks about Jesus bearing our sins in his body on the tree. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. We were all healed at Calvary. We just need a manifestation of it. We just need to get in God's presence. Amen. 
and, and get a manifestation because Jesus paid for it by his stripes we're healed. He's a good God. He's a saving God. He's a healing God. He's a loving God. He loves to save. He loves to heal. He loves to bless suffering humanity. That's what Jesus came to do. You know, when I was saved and later filled with the Holy Ghost, God awakened me to his healing power. I'd seen him heal many times when I was a small boy. But after I got saved and I was filled with the Holy Ghost, God opened my eyes and God showed me, I am your Jehovah Rapha. And I've had him speak to me personally. You shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I, I'd seen him heal before, but from the moment that I got saved to this moment, I have seen God do some great miracles, great healings, not only in my life, but also in the lives of others. And church, we have seen him right here in this church many times. We have seen him heal people over and over and over again. And we know our God that he's a Jehovah Rapha God, the God who heals us. You say, well, I've been praying. I hadn't got it yet. Seek him. Well, I sought him, but I haven't found. Then knock, knock, knock. Be persistent in your prayer. The un unjust judge and the, the widow woman, she goes to him, says, avenge me of my adversary, avenge me of my adversary. He said, I don't fear God nor man, but this woman just keeps coming. He said, she's just wearing me out. He said, I'm going to avenge her of her adversary. And Jesus said, if an unjust judge will do that, how much more will your heavenly Father do for them that cry unto him night and day? Keep on crying. Go on, praise him. Hallelujah. God wants you to know him. He doesn't want you to just get all the blessings. He wants to bless you so you can know him. So seek him. Hallelujah. I, I look at the ministry of Jesus. Jesus preached, Jesus taught, and Jesus healed. And he said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my Father. And when I read Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever, I cannot tell you what that did to my faith. And I figured, I know it. What he did in Matthew, he is today. What he was in Mark, he is today. What he was in Luke, he is today. What he was, is in John, he is today. Hallelujah. And I want you to know what he did in Matthew he'll do today. What he did in Mark, he will do today. What he did in Luke, he will do today. What he did in John, he will do today. We don't have a Jesus that used to be. We have a Jesus who is now, hallelujah. We have Jesus, the Jesus I know, he cast out devils, he forgave sin, he healed the sick, he had compassion on the multitude, and he has never lost his compassion. Go on and praise him. He's our Jehovah Rapha. And he is forever a healer. He wants you well. And the devil wants you sick. He wants you up. And the devil wants you blessed. The devil wants you down. God wants you up. The devil wants you down. My, my mind's going on to the next point. Amen. The devil wants to destroy you. God wants to bless you. He's a great God. He's our Jehovah Rapha. He's a healing God. Fifthly, he's a loving God. Oh, I had so much enjoyment studying this part. Some people think he's a God with a great big baseball bat that's getting ready to kick them out of the kingdom of God because they made an error of sin slightly. Not a willful sin, but even if you sin willfully, we have an advocate with the Father. He said that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins if we confess them and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is for you. The devil is against you. And if you ever get your theology straightened out like that, you can get some great things from God. God's not ready to kick you out. No, no, no. He's a loving God. God is love. And when you feel love, you feel God. John said, we know our God and we have believed the love that God has shown us. Look, look at this. First John 4, 16. Look at what John said. I want you to look at that word believe because it's past tense. We're in this thing. We're in the kingdom. It's what John is saying. And we have known and believed 
the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Memorize that. It's powerful. If you have believed, praise God. You know. You have known the love of God. Amen. We know our God and God is love. The Bible says the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts Amen. by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave. That means he loves all the people of the world. We used to sing it. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. God is a great God. God saw all of it. He saw every person. He saw every color. And God loved the whole world. Which brings me to my sixth point. He's a giving God. He's a loving God. But he's a giving God. Put John 3.16 up there, brother. For God so loved the world. Not just America. But God loves the whole world. For God so loved the world, he gave. He gave his only begotten son. So God is a giving God. God is not a taking God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved that he gave heaven's best. And whosoever believes in him, they do not have to perish. They do not have to die and go to hell, amen. But they can have eternal, everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God is a giving God. God is a loving God. And he gave his only begotten son to save you and me. And what I want you to know, that those who believe in Jesus, is that they're going to a land where there's no pain, there's no crying, there's no sign. There's no dying. There's no sorrow. We, we did a funeral here yesterday, a memorial. And my heart was broken as I looked at the grandchildren and how their heart was broken. That they had lost their papa. But when we get to heaven, there'll be no sorrow. There'll be no tears. There'll be no graveside, graveyards on the hillsides of glory. Amen. The Bible says, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne, whose eyes were like a flame of fire. He said, behold, I make all things new. Hallelujah. And he so loved us that he gave us eternal life. The Father did through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want you to notice what Jesus said. John three seventeen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved so many people in the church people that i meet outside the walls of the church they feel so condemned so many people feel like god condemns they know he doesn't he loves you he's a good god no jesus said god did not send me to condemn the father sent me to seek and to save that which is lost god is a giving god and he gave his son and through his son he gives us everlasting, eternal life. Go on and praise him that your name is written in the book. So God is a rewarding God. God is a blessing God. God is a delivering God. He's a healing God. He's a loving God. He's a giving God. And then seventh and lastly, he's a merciful God. Many of us, we run out of mercy sometimes when we're dealing with people. We just get so frustrated and aggravated. But God, God never, 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 God never runs out of mercy. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. And his righteousness is to the children's children. His mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. When I need mercy, Brother Ray sings a song about that. You need to sing that soon about the mercy. Mercy, glory to God. He didn't give me what I deserved. He gave me what I didn't deserve, and he gave me mercy. I needed mercy. Did you need mercy? Go on, praise God for the mercy that he gave to you. 
See, his mercy reaches for everybody. And you cannot sin so much. Listen to me. You cannot sin so much that you go beyond his mercy. And wherever you are today, his mercy reaches down for you. Look at 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. I noticed in putting this together how Paul goes back and he blesses the Father. He's so thankful to the Father. If, if, if uh, We'll look at this and then I'll get him to put Ephesians 1 and 3 back. They almost sound alike. But look at this. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Now put Ephesians 1 and 6 up there, David. But look at Paul. He has this intimate relationship with the Father. He knows the Father. Through Jesus. Look at it. Ephesians 1 and 3. 1 and 3. Ah, blessed be the God. Almost looks like it's a repeat, but it isn't. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now go back to, to the other scripture, Brother David. Pull up 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. Look at it. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, who has comforted us. The God of all comfort. That's powerful. He's the God of mercies. Now listen real careful. The devil is the father of all liars. And God is the father of all mercies. I don't know about you. But I'm not going to go to hell and spend eternity with the devil. The father of liars. When I can know the father of all mercies hallelujah <laughs> i've learned that god is a good god and, and i'm going to serve him you know i thought about it. a lot of people they don't know the truths that we're preaching here they don't know the truths that i've preached today they don't know their god and, and they need to read the bible and find out what kind of god it is that they have it's in the bible Amen. read the book Read the B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness. That the man of God may be thoroughly furnished to all good works. That they may know God. Paul said, that I may know him. In the fellowship of his suffering, in the power of his resurrection, at least by any means I might be made conformable unto his death. And then in his last word letter, he wrote in 2 Timothy. A lot of preachers misquote this. They say, I know in whom I believe. Paul didn't say that at all. He said, for I know whom I have believed. I know him. It was my quest to know him. For I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Go on and praise him. He's going to save you, and he's going to keep you. That's what this church is all about here at Westmoreland, about knowing God. Brother Blake, I'm going to stand here. I'll try to if you'll zoom in on me. That's why we urge people to come out here so we can teach you, so we can shepherd you, so we can lead you to know the God of the Bible. We want you to know who God is. And we want you to know just how good God is. For they that do know their God, they shall be strong and do mighty works in Jesus' name. You know, it's such a joy for me to preach about a good God. A God who gave his son to die on the cross for you and me. And today, if you're not saved, if you're lost in sin, I urge you to turn away from the devil. Turn away from the world. I urge you to give your heart to Jesus Christ. No matter how far down you have gone out in sin, no one can go. I'm going to try to stand still, Brother Baker. No one can go beyond God's mercy. And you're here today. Simply because the Holy Ghost has drawn you. We prayed for you Friday night before you ever decided you were going to come. And we prayed that God would draw you here as a prayer team. And we prayed those very words that the Holy Ghost would draw you. 
And we also pray that he would convict you. We also pray that he would open your heart to receive Jesus as your Lord. We've already prayed that. And God is calling. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling for you and for me. Come home. Come home. You who are weary, come home. And all you have to do is say, Lord, like John, I believe the love of God that you have toward me. And I know I'm a son of God, and you know I'm a sinner. And God, I know I need a Savior. And you sent your son to save me. So Jesus, come into my heart. Wash me in your blood. Flush all the filth out. Break every chain, every bondage that has been wrapped itself around my life. And free me that I may serve you in spirit and in truth. Friend, if you pray that prayer, if you meant it in your heart, just say, Father, I thank you I'm saved. Because you can't even come unless he calls you. But I know he's calling. Let us stand. Pastor Rick, if you would come, please. God is a great God. He's a good God. And God loves you. One man asked me, he said, can you preach all of that? I said, in about 40 minutes, and that's about what it took me. We had a lot going on here today. But I want you to know God. Thank you for being here. But more than anything, my assignment is to teach. Preach, teach, heal the sick, empower others to know God. Let's worship him, Pastor Ricky. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship His holy We worship you, Lord. Name. These altars are open. Not gently, if you have a specific need, I want you to be bold enough. I, I did some bold preaching this morning against some traditions. I want you to be bold enough to get out of your seat. Say, God, I need you. I need a Savior. I'm not saved. If you've been saved and you've gone away from God and you're struggling with issues, say, God, I heard it. You're a delivering God. Not only are you a Savior, you're a deliverer. I want you to come. Say, Lord, I come for my miracle. He is the Father of all mercy. Don't ever forget that. 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. Go study it. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all mercies. He's a merciful God that loves you. Don't let anything keep you away from knowing God. Brother Ray, welcome, Brother Woody. Some of you men, come on up here and let's pray. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. 